Hello, how you doing? Welcome to a brand new video and something a little bit different around here. These are going to be my 2023 to 24 Premier League predictions. I absolutely love watching those videos around YouTube and uh, I thought I might give it a go myself and uh, get it completely wrong and we'll have a look in a sort of nine months time in, in May. Um, at the end of the season, we'll reflect on these and I'll give myself a score depending on how many places I am out really. So I'm Joe if you're new around here uh, or Captain Goodspeed and we have daily sports and retro gaming content around here. At the moment we've got F1 manager, cricket captain uh, and we will be bringing back a football manager uh, for 2024 when that comes out around about October time. Uh, also looking to play the new EA Sports football club game as well so looking forward to seeing that but uh, first things first if you want to join my uh, FPL league uh, for the fantasy premier league you can down below with the code G6C54F so uh, yeah we'll see how we get on I think uh, my team looks pretty good I'll show you uh, at the end of the video what my FPL team is and fingers crossed it will it will be a good one and uh, I win that lovely seven night hospitality stay or whatever it is for winning uh, the fantasy football league but anyway uh, of course i'm going to go through it team by team i can't claim to be an absolute devout expert of football but uh, i'll give my insight and why i think uh, certain things uh, it's going to be incredibly difficult to predict particularly the bottom end of the premier league this year i think there's a lot of of uh, similarly matched teams that could well find themselves in real trouble. So, yeah, uh, apologies if you're one of the three teams I've predicted to go down. As you can see, my team is in Newcastle United. So, will I predict that we're going to win the Premier League this season? Let's find out. So, first things first, uh, we are going to have a look at the 20th place team. And I think this might surprise some people, but I have gone for Wolves. And uh, the, the main reason behind this is they've lost a lot of their best players uh, for a lot of money. You know, Raul Jimenez, not a lot of money. Uh, Ruben Neves is the, the big one, though, um, who I think was the key player for Wolves. And uh, they've also lost Lopetegui uh, in charge and Gary O'Neill, although he did a very good job at Bournemouth last season, I, I just can't see it. He hasn't had a pre-season. He's coming in right at the, the, the start of it all. Um, and I did think Wolves would go down last year, and for a lot of uh, a lot of the season, they looked like they they could, and they slipped back into trouble uh, towards the end. But I think this is the end of the road for Wolves. Twentieth place might be a bit harsh, but um, I think it is now the time. Unfortunately, uh, up into nineteenth place, and this is another team I really. <laughs> widely predicted to be relegated last season. Nottingham Forest, Steve Cooper did a, a terrific job keeping them up. Obviously, they signed nigh on 25 players last year, uh, gelling that team together. They looked dead and buried at Christmas, but uh, managed to just about pick up enough points. I think they finished 16th in the end. Um, you know, they've done bits and pieces of business over the summer, but I hate this cliche, but second second season syndrome, I think, will definitely get Forrest. Um, they didn't look good enough at points last season, and um, I do worry for them this year that some of the teams around them have just about got enough to keep their heads above water, in my opinion. So, Forrest, it's been nice having you, and I'm sure we'll have another entertaining season watching you, but I, I don't think you're staying up this time. And a big apologies to my good friend Toby, who uh, I know roots for Forrest. Um, he'll, he'll be disappointed with that prediction. Uh, up to the final relegation place, and I have gone for Sheffield United, um, who obviously finished second in the championship last year. I think a lot of people are tipping them to just about stay up this year, but I think they'll, they'll just drop below, a little bit like 2007, if you like. I think there's going to be a lot of teams in and around the drop zone this season. I think it will go down to the last couple of games, and I think we could see four or five teams in there. It's all going to be about home form, I would suggest. So if they can, you know, make Bramall Lane a, a fortress, pick up the points when they can, um, I think they, they, they can do it. Um, they've obviously recruited okay over the summer, but 
just not invested enough and i think you'll find that of a lot of these teams down the bottom they've just not thrown enough money at it and um it's been a bit of a, a strange summer for that really we haven't seen the likes of what fulham did a few years ago where they just blew 150 million or whatever and then went straight back down it's it's going to be really tight but sheffield united have just tipped to uh, stay below the red line unfortunately uh, so that means that Luton Town are going to stay up and this might be an absolutely crazy suggestion but I feel like much like Nottingham Forest survived last season you know I, I remember Blackpool many many years ago Hull City many many years ago you, you know they're coming into the Premier League and, and sort of shocking uh, the system if you like and I, I can see Luton Town picking up 10, 15, 20 points pretty easily um, in the first half of the season. It's going to be that second half of the season and, and, and I think we'll gradually see them drop down. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see them in the top half, you know, around about November time, but then just gradually uh, drop down the league and it's going to be by the skin of their teeth but I'm predicting that they're going to stay up. I, I had to do something different in this prediction video. If I'm going to do it, I'm not going to just put out the the same old rubbish that everybody else has uh, said and and i've seen pretty much on every prediction video out there that uh, luton town were firmly rooted to the bottom bottom of the table but uh, i'm gonna back them to stay up by the skin of their teeth in 17th place uh, on to 16th in the league and i have gone everton when, when I was putting this together, I was like, right, I'm going to put Everton 18th because they're really reminding me of, of Sunderland from many years ago when they uh, would just be 18th, 19th, uh, going into the last seven games. They'd change their manager, then they'd survive and finish 16th, 17th every single season. But then one year... They went down um, and I feel like this could be the year for Everton. The, the main reason being that I think their recruitment has been horrible um, for many, many years. They, they haven't got a great squad. It could obviously change. That is the disclaimer with this video. I'm, I'm recording this on the, the eve of the Premier League season. There's still three weeks of the, the transfer window left. There could be a lot of stuff to change yet, but Everton are just a team that I don't fancy to stay up much longer unless something changes. The reason I've backed them this year, Sean Dyche, I think will keep them organised. And I think there's easily four teams that are worse than them, in my opinion anyway. Um, and I think they'll just about stay up this season, actually. Uh, keeping Calvert-Lewin fit, that's got to be the... The main objective for them this season they have got some good young players hopefully they can uh, breed them through and maybe we can nick a couple uh, at newcastle in january who knows uh, a bit like anthony gordon again anyway uh into p15 and uh, now looking at burnley and this this was an odd one for me um i've seen a lot of hype about burnley lots of people thinking that they might even finish top half this year um, I think they'll they'll stay up definitely. You know, Vincent Company does seem to be a, a a solid manager. He seems to have a, a very clear philosophy and a very nice, easy on the eye philosophy. Will that cut it in the Premier League? They got absolutely torn apart by Manchester City in the FA Cup last year, and I worry that that's what's going to happen at multiple teams this year. Um, again, it's going to be their home form. That's how they stayed in the Premier League for so long under Sean Dyche. They were really solid at Turf Moor and really did, uh, you know, rack up the points. Um, I don't fancy them to go all the way into the top half, but I do feel they should stay up uh, and probably will just about get above Sean Dyche's Everton, which is quite hilarious, really, quite ironic. Um, but anyway, on to P14, and I've gone Bournemouth. I couldn't believe this. Last season... I would have had them rooted uh, to the bottom of the table. Um, and again, anywhere really from well, from 20th up to, I would say about 10th. I think all of these are relegation candidates this season. And a bad run of form at the wrong time, a change of management at the wrong time. And they could be in trouble. I think the big question for me with Bournemouth is their, their new manager. I think had Gary O'Neill stayed at Bournemouth, I, th I think I'd have been pretty confident with 14th, but we've seen with these new managers that come in that not many people have necessarily heard of. It's either hit, like uh, Brighton, obviously, uh, have performed, or it's a miss, like Frank De Boer <laughs> at Crystal Palace, or, you know, uh, Jesse Marsh at Leeds. You know, these managers that haven't got much of a reputation coming into the Premier League, 
and then you know uh, failing I mean Frank Dubois everybody expected him to be wonderful um, after his work at Ajax but it wasn't to be uh, anyway speaking of uh, managers and managers are quite like uh, Marco Silva at Fulham I do f- I do like Fulham I think Fulham uh, overachieved last season most definitely uh, I think Mitrovic is a big factor in this uh, as of this video he hasn't left Fulham just yet I'm not sure what's going on there uh, obviously the sound signed Raul Jimenez from Wolves it's, it seems a bit of a like for like uh, replacement for Mitrovic I don't think I can see those two playing in the same team um, and they got Jimenez for five million that seems like a really good deal I think they'll get a lot of money for Mitrovic if if he does go and then it's going to be about how do they reinvest that they need to replace that 15 20 goal a season striker I don't think Jimenez is that anymore he's not been the same since his head injury so that's a a big one for me is can is Mitrovic going to be staying and if he doesn't can they replace because quite easily if if Mitrovic goes and they sign a load of fodder they could be going down this season they really could Um, but I've gone for a, a very safe 13th position for them Uh, Next, and it's another striker trouble problem really for Brentford. Uh, Obviously, Thomas Frank's done a a great job um, at Brentford over the years. And, you know, I'm baffled at how good they were at times last season. Obviously, absolutely thumped Manchester United. Um, They are a good team on their day. I think they would finish top half probably again um, had Ivan Toney been there the whole season Uh, obviously he's back in around about january time so they could be struggling before that um you know they might just escape relegation without tony but uh they always recruit well they always seem to make the the right signings it it reminds me a lot of uh, newcastle in the the sort of alan pardew era picking out these these players that are absolutely fabulous players for you know very small amount of money and then eventually we'll probably sell them on there's another team beginning with b that i think that's very similar to um that are a little bit higher up the table but i think another solid season in the premier league for brentford i think they won't trouble relegation particularly when tony's back and um hopefully hopefully they've they've got just about enough about them because i do like brentford i like what's going on there and uh, i think a little bit like a, a brighton a little bit like a um what Burnley used to be, I suppose, you know, having the, and Southampton had solid Premier League clubs, even though they're not going to go and realistically break at the top six without significant investment. Okay, on to the next one and uh, number 11, West Ham. And this is based upon their recent business. Uh, they've obviously just signed Harry Maguire at centre back, or at least agreed a, a deal with him. Ward Prowse as well. Uh, in the midfield I think those are two absolutely cracking signings for West Ham obviously the big loss is Declan Rice 100 million to Arsenal we'll be talking about that one in a little bit but um, I really like the signing of Ward Prowse it's about 30 million pound and to be fair he's not that dissimilar uh, a quality of player to Declan Rice at this stage obviously Rice has got plenty of years ahead of him and I think he will become a a world beater but um, yeah, Ward Prowse, obviously set piece brilliance from him. That's going to gain you a decent amount of points in the season. My biggest worry with West Ham is obviously last year they had the distraction of the Conference League and it nearly relegated them. They, they had a decent run at the end of the season that kept them up. They won the Conference League, meaning they're in the Europa League now, which is even more of an intense competition than the Conference League. Other than you're not going to the, the random places like Azerbaijan every week, probably. Um, however, they might struggle. They could end up a, a lot lower. I think they need to go and, and sign a couple of strikers, really. That's uh, where their recruitment has been really poor over the last few years. Skamak has obviously gone. Um, but I think a, a top quality striker in there will help them out and I think David Moyes is good enough to certainly keep them in the division whether Moyes will survive that long I don't know obviously a lot of questions were asked last season is he going to survive another year I know the West Ham fans aren't the biggest fan of David Moyes and that could unfortunately be the death of him I wouldn't be surprised to see Moyes back at Everton by the end of the year 
Um, that that wouldn't be a surprise for me because I think if Everton are in the relegation zone, Dyche isn't going to survive that. So, yeah, keep an eye on that one. Uh, into 10th place then, and I've gone Crystal Palace. I can't believe I've gone <laughs> so high for, for Crystal Palace. Bit of a nosebleed territory for them. Obviously, Vieira was a new manager, new ideas. They felt fresh. Um, obviously, had that more attacking uh, mindset in terms of the signings. It wasn't going great for um, Vieira. I think he was very harshly treated last season, but you cannot argue the impact that Roy Hodgson had when he came back in there. He's going to be there another year. I can't see them being anywhere near the relegation zone. Uh, the only reason I've gone 10th is because I think the the, the 10 teams below them, I think we'll finish below them. Uh, I think the, the Hodgson factor is a big one here. Obviously no European football to distract them like a West Ham and yeah, Crystal Palace in, in P9, uh, P10 nine, P this season. I think that would be a, a pretty good result for them. And uh, they'd definitely be happy with that. Let me know if you're a Crystal pa Palace fan down in the comments. Would you take 10th? I think you very much would. Anyway, first controversial pick, I think, uh, is this one at number nine. And that is Tottenham Spurs. <sighs> Obviously, uh, Postacoglu... It is in there, if that's how you say his name. Uh, Celtic manager last season did a, a good job with them. Um, obviously, we've seen Brendan Rodgers did a cracking job at, at Celtic, came over to Leicester, did a great job with them. And Leicester, with the best will in the world, aren't as big a, a team as Tottenham. So, um, interesting sort of parallel there. And I think Tottenham could very easily prove me wrong here, but... Harry Kane is on the verge of going to Bayern Munich as we speak. Now, I don't know whether that transfer will go through. That's a big, big thing. But I am of the opinion Harry Kane will go. And that leaves a massive hole for Tottenham. I think he's been propping them up, um, basically carrying them on his back himself for many, many years. I know Son is a very good player. Kulosevsky is a very good player, but... Harry Kane is world class and scores you 30 goals a season. Where do you replace that? You know, they're going to get probably 100 million ish for Harry Kane, maybe a little bit less, more like the 80 million mark. You can't really go out there and buy a Harry Kane esque striker. So, unless they put massive investment in there, perhaps they could get Mbappe or somebody for a year uh, on a year's loan, and that might, might uh, be the the key to it but I just can't see them scoring many goals they had a very poor year last year I think it's going to be a transitional year for Tottenham and I've gone for ninth and I think they'd actually you know if they're not going to finish top four I think they'd rather finish ninth um, than finish in the conference league for instance and have a fresh go at it for season two I think Postacoglu is going to need time I think Tottenham I've, I've tried everything really to to throw themselves at the top four, uh, top five. But um, yeah, I, I just can't see it this season. So uh, in eighth place, I've gone Brighton. And this could be a horrible one. I think Brighton could easily end up being not a one season wonder because they, they'd been good for many years. But last season, they were brilliant. Could have finished, uh, you know, top top four really with Newcastle if certain results had gone their way um, but Brighton I can't see um, I can't see them getting any worse than last season obviously it wouldn't be as strong a finish but um, I think I think we can we can see them in the top eight again this year but we could well see them in the relegation battle if they if they really lose their way We'll see. Uh, Brighton is is one I, I considered putting a lot lower, but eight I think is a safe assumption. Uh, then another team that did very well last season after sacking their manager. Obviously, Brighton didn't sack their manager Graham Potter, but they they brought in a, a new one uh, because Potter left for Chelsea. Aston Villa sacked Gerrard. They brought in Emery. Had a wonderful uh, run to the end of the season. I think they they had the second most points after. Um, Emery joined them so you know if you keep that form going you're going to finish in the top four but uh, I think Villa will run out of a little bit of steam at some point I don't think they've got the out now quality to beat what I would consider the top four teams in this Premier League this year um, 
but I think another seventh place finish would be brilliant. They've obviously got the Conference League this year, which could have the West Ham effect on them of distracting them. They could finish a bit lower, but they have recruited well. I think they've got a good squad. They've got some good young players in there as well. I think it'll all work out very nicely for Aston Villa. They've got a big soft spot after a good uh, football manager save a few years ago when I did the Sir Alex uh, Ferguson challenge. So, yeah, looking forward to, to seeing how uh, Aston Villa get on this year. And that brings me on to sixth position in the league. And uh, I've got Newcastle. Now, that's probably the lowest prediction I've seen of uh, the Toon Army this year. I have seen them uh, as high as fourth. I've, I've seen them, um, you know, around about fifth. But yeah, I think last season was terrific. I think we were unlucky to finish third, uh, not finish third in the end. I think Man United were quite fortunate, but uh, we did drop off a little bit towards the end of the year. And I think it's going to be difficult to, to maintain that level. I think I'd be very, very happy with sixth come the end of the season and a good Champions League run. I think Europa League is probably more our level at, at the time being. I don't think the recruitment has quite gone as well as... I maybe hoped. Um, we've obviously brought in a few players. Tonali, the, the big one. But we need a, a natural left back um, and a really top quality left back in three weeks. Obviously, a lot of things can change. Um, a lot of signings can come in. But at this moment in time, we need a left back. Um, I think we need another world-class midfielder in there as well. Um, and obviously, Callum Wilson, not getting any younger. Uh, Isaac's up there as well. Both of them together can do very, very good. But I think we, I'd like another top quality striker in there. So I think, well, you know, three or four signings away from being absolute top four uh, in the league. Um, but we're not far away. But <laughs> there's still a lot of the, the players like, you know, Matt Ritchie in there, uh, Ryan Fraser in there that, you know, they were around in the, the Steve Bruce era where we were going to go down to be blunt so yeah I still need a little bit of reinvigorating um, of the squad in, in my opinion to really truly become a top four I hope I'm wrong I hope we, we get there again but I, I just can't see it I think other teams are going to be back on form this season as well so yeah uh, anyway you'll notice the top five I have gone for Champions League slots I think um, it's well documented obviously the Champions League is changing this year it's format and uh, there is the um, the coefficient, um, and I think the top two performing countries in in the Champions League will get an extra Champions League slot. That's my understanding of it. So I would imagine England are going to be uh, one of the better performing countries. So I've given us a fifth Champions League spot. So I think fifth will be enough to get Champions League this year. And in fifth, I have gone for Liverpool. Um, this could be a bit of a silly one. They might go on an amazing run again and end up competing for the title. They've obviously lost a lot of their depth players. You know, Milner's gone, Henderson's gone, Fabinho's gone, uh, Roberto Firmino's gone as well. And they're just the ones I can think of off the top of my head. And you know I've not seen much in the way of lots of replacements they need a real star quality striker I know they've got Salah Salah will score your goals um, Nunes will score your goals but I just think I think they need a little bit more an out and out striker your Haaland figure you know they don't have that particularly um and I think that's what's going to let them down compared to some of the other teams that I've put up there. But yeah, Liverpool fifth, that's um, a bit of a controversial one. They could well end up going and winning the title now that I've said that. But hey, what what can I say? Um, in fourth place, I've gone Manchester United. Um, I really, really like the Hoyland signing. Um, I think... Man United for many years have needed that out and out striker. They've got lots of wingers, really good wingers that can come in and can score goals. Rashford, Martial, you know, all of those. But yeah, they've got a striker now. I think Man United are, are going to only make progress this season, which might sound odd that I've put them fourth rather than third um, because they, I think, will, will be a lot better this year. Um, I think Ten Hag has, has got his grip of Manchester United now and hopefully they'll give him time they certainly did last season there was multiple times where you thought oh my god 
Man United are out of their depth and their away form has to improve. Um, but I think it's going to be pretty close between third and fifth. So these three are, are pretty interchangeable. And speaking of third and who I think will have an in incredibly better season is Chelsea. Obviously finished in the bottom half last year. I had a bit of a horror show, spent hundreds of million millions of pounds and really wasted it to be blunt with you but I think they've actually made some decent signings this year they've made a couple of signings in the the striking department and as of now they've still got Romelu Lukaku in there so in in some sort of alternate world where he comes back into the team perhaps um, Chelsea will be back where I think they belong in the in the sort of top four, top five of the Premier League. Um, I think no Euro European football is the big reason I've put them third. You know, you'll notice that four or five teams below them have European football. And I think that will benefit Chelsea towards the end of the season because I think all of those teams are going to get to the latter stages of their competitions and... Chelsea will, will have extra rest which I think will help them push forward and finish third I think Poch at the helm that's a good appointment again they've got to give him time he's good working with youngsters and hopefully a couple more signings for Chelsea by the end of the window surely on deadline day they're, they're going to go and spend 300 million anyway so <laughs> um, it'll be interesting to see where they end up come the end of the year so there's two teams left Am I going to be boring and pick Manchester City to win their fourth successive Premier League title, which nobody's ever done before, by the way, in the Premier League era? Or am I going to back uh, my boyhood club, Arsenal, um, when I was a child and, and in the real Wenger era? Th that's who I supported. Um, it's only been in the last few years that... I've, I've started following Newcastle and, and become a supporter of Newcastle. Um now but uh, I still obviously have a real love for Arsenal will I back them will I let Hart go overhead and get them to win their first Premier League title since 2004 no <laughs> I've gone with a boring option um, I've got Man City to win Arsenal in second I think Arsenal have made some terrific signings in the summer so far Declan Rice of course being the, the big one uh, but Havertz in there Timber in there as well I think those are two really quality signings that will open the depth of the squad up all of our young players are a little bit older as well a little bit more experienced have the heartbreak if you like of last season to thank for a better experience now obviously Liverpool very very similar they got so close at one year uh, to win the Premier League and then went and won it the next year so I, I feel like Arsenal could do that but City are so strong and they've just signed uh, Guardiola as well I think bolstering that defence I mean what a team they are I think the big thing for City is can they keep Haaland fit because if if Haaland gets injured City become a little bit more ordinary. Um, you know, when you've got a cheat code of a striker scoring your 35 Premier League goals or 53 in all competitions, you're going to be pretty unstoppable, no matter who you are. Um, so, yeah, I, I, a lot rests on Haaland for me. If he gets injured, it, it could well be a very, very close title race. I think City are going to score or win 90 plus points again and. Yeah, that could be the, um, the the benchmark that you have to hit. If you want to win the Premier League off Manchester City, you're going to go and have to get 90 points. But that is my Premier League predictions. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section. But hold that thought because I'm going to show you my FPL team. So there you have it then. There is my uh, FPL team on the left-hand side of the screen. You can see Pickford... I've put in goal. Um, I think always does put in a good performance for Everton. Uh, you know, he's not not one for letting the side down, I don't think. Um, so, yeah, Pickford in goal. Uh, Trippier right back. Have to go with Trippier. Uh, Kyle Walker, Sven Botman and uh, Andy Robertson in defence. Uh, then Caicedo, uh, Saka, Odegaard and Bruno in the midfield. And Harry Kane and Haaland up front at the moment. Obviously, if Kane leaves, then I'll have to change that up. Um, but I think that's a pretty good squad. You, you know, use the £100 million 
to its fullest. Um, I'm pretty happy with that. <laughs> you know, I used to play this many, many years ago. This is the first FPL I've done for a long time. Um, and I used to really struggle to get them all into the team. So I'm very quietly uh, confident that that's going to be a, a good side over the season but uh, let me know down in the comment section what are your predictions for this Premier League season do you think I've made some absolute howlers I think it's it's generally a pretty fair table um, I'll be intrigued to know come May how far off am I going to be? I'm not going to look at this at all between now and May and uh, we'll see we'll see where where I got to come the end of the season but or come what may there you go there's a pun for you joe uh but yes let me know down in the comments what your uh personal predictions are for this season and of course if you uh, want to get involved you can join my uh, fantasy premier league um league and see if you can beat that wonderful team which of course you can't because it is the the best team i suppose you could pick that exact same team and uh, see what you can do from that but uh, yeah hopefully you've enjoyed it if you have give it a big thumbs up down below obviously something very different for me if you've got any feedback anything you'd like to see and that sort of thing obviously there's so many things i could predict on my channel with how many sports i'm into so do let me know down in the comments uh, what your thoughts are for the video and hopefully you enjoy the start of the premier league starting tomorrow night with uh, manchester city taking on burnley i think it is so yes i uh, hope you enjoy uh, and good luck for the fantasy premier league this season and of course good luck to the 20 teams in the premier league this year hopefully you're all having a wonderful day thanks for watching and goodbye